Hello and welcome to this mini gem. Anticoagulation, it doesn't have to be a bleeding nightmare. By the end of this mini gem, we will hopefully have a strategy on how to select patients for anticoagulation therapy. We will be able to find and use different risk stratification tools. We will have an idea of the different agents available to us, as well as being able to discuss the differences between them with patients and relatives. And we will also briefly review the main points from the NICE guidelines. Our case study is a 79-year-old man with a background of diabetes and hypertension. And he was referred to A&E by his GP with shortness of breath, fevers, a cough and some chest pains. As you can see from his initial investigations, he has raised inflammatory markers, he has left basal consolidation on his chest x-ray and his ECG shows that he's in atrial fibrillation. Our patient is diagnosed with a left basal community acquired pneumonia and he spends a week in hospital receiving IV antibiotics and fluids. He is planned for discharge tomorrow, but you notice on your routine ward round that he remains in atrial fibrillation. Why don't you pause the slideshow for a few moments and think a little bit about what you would do in this situation. Now, what we know about atrial fibrillation is that it carries with it an increased risk of stroke. Now, as our patient remains in atrial fibrillation, we should be considering therapeutic anticoagulation as an option for him. It's easy to get overwhelmed in the decision as to whether or not this would be an appropriate option for him. There are, however, some excellent risk stratification tools available to us to help us make the decision. The CHADS2 VAS score is a risk stratification tool for patients in atrial fibrillation. It is easily found online and is included in the NICE guidelines. Using our patient as an example, we know that he scores one point for hypertension, two points for his age, and one point for diabetes. This equates to a CHADS VAS score of four, which carries with it a 4% chance of having a stroke in one year. The score will become relevant later when we talk about the NICE guidelines. When we are thinking about anticoagulation, we obviously have to think about bleeding risk. The HASBLED score is a useful and easily accessible score which can quantify someone's bleeding risk as well as highlighting modifiable bleeding risk factors. Our patient scores a point for hypertension and he also scores a point for elderly as he is over the age of 65. As you can see, many of the risk factors on the chads VAS score and the HASBLED score are the same. It is therefore important that we use them more as a guide to help us make anticoagulation decisions with a patient and their relatives. Why don't you take a screenshot on your phone of the last two slides so that they are easily accessible to you whilst you are on the ward. Here is what NICE have to say about anticoagulation for patients in atrial fibrillation based on their CHADS VAS score. Any patient with atrial fibrillation with a CHADS VAS score of 0 should not be considered for anticoagulation. Any patient with a CHADS VAS score of 1 should be considered for anticoagulation. And any patient with a CHADS VAS score of 2 or above, which includes our patient, should be offered anticoagulation. Remember, bleeding risk always has to be taken into account when making these decisions, and that is what the HASBLED score is useful for. As with any treatment decision, this should be thoroughly discussed with the patient. Treatment options for anticoagulation for patients with atrial fibrillation used to include aspirin. This guidance has changed, however, and we no longer offer aspirin to anybody as a medication for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation. Warfarin is a well-researched, tried and tested anticoagulation agent with many different indications. Most physicians are comfortable using it, and one of its main advantages is that it's reversible. This means that if you are admitted to hospital whilst you're on warfarin with an acute emergency bleed, the effect of warfarin can be reversed within minutes. Talking about the disadvantages of warfarin, we know that it has a narrow therapeutic window. This means that the target INR in atrial fibrillation is 2 to 3. There are multiple different factors that affect your time in therapeutic window, including comorbidities, compliance with medications, as well as drug and food interactions. The other major disadvantage about warfarin is that it involves regular INR checks at the warfarin clinic. This can be a significant burden on patients, especially if they're elderly. We will talk about the different novel oral anticoagulant agents, or NOACs, in turn, but there are some advantages which are universal to them. Firstly, all novel oral anticoagulant agents do not require any form of active monitoring, although some will require monitoring of renal function.
Unlike warfarin, where you may have a subtherapeutic INR, once you take your tablet of novel or an anticoagulant, you will be anticoagulated effectively. Dabigatrin is a NOAC that is taken twice daily at a dose of either 110 mg twice daily or 150 mg twice daily, depending on your age and renal function. We know that in some circumstances, dabigatrin has a lower bleeding risk than warfarin. The other main advantage of dabigatrin is that it now has a licensed antidote. Disadvantages of dabigatrin include the fact that you have to monitor renal function carefully. The other disadvantage is that it's a twice daily tablet, which especially in the elderly population might be a burden on a patient. Rivaroxaban is a NOAC that is taken once daily in a dose of either 20 mg or 15 mg, again depending on your renal function. It has a slightly reduced intracranial bleeding risk with warfarin. however the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding is slightly higher. One major advantage of rivaroxaban compared to dabigatrin is that it can be put into a dose set box and it can be also crushed for patients with PEG tubes. In terms of disadvantages, you have to monitor renal function at least annually, and at present, there is no available antidote. Apixaban is a NOAC that is taken twice daily at a dose of 5 mg or 2.5 mg, again depending on your renal function and age. Apixaban carries a slightly reduced risk of major bleeding than warfarin. It also carries a slightly lower risk of stroke compared to warfarin in the context of atrial fibrillation. As with rivaroxaban, it can be crushed for a peg-fed patient and it can also be put into a dose-set box. The disadvantages include the fact that it is a twice-daily tablet, you have to monitor renal function approximately once or twice a year, and again, there is no antidote present in the context of major bleeding. When dealing with elderly patients in particular, it is important that they might have different priorities to a younger patient. For instance, practicality is often very important, and regular blood tests such as INR checks might not be appropriate for them. When it comes to dealing with patients with falls, NICE are fairly clear. We do not withhold anticoagulation solely because the person is at risk of having a fall. When it comes to frailty and comorbidities, it is easy to think that this might preclude a patient from anticoagulation as the risk would be too high. However, we know that these patients are extremely high risk of a stroke and therefore anticoagulation might be the appropriate option for them. We also know that hemorrhagic risk is often overestimated by physicians. Hopefully, after hearing this, you will have a strategy for selecting patients for anticoagulation therapy. You will be able to find and use the risk stratification tools available to us be able to recall the different anticoagulation agents available and to be able to discuss the differences between them. And you should also know the NICE guidelines and how to access them. One last thing to note is that we often see the complications of anticoagulation therapy, such as intracranial bleeds and GI bleeds. However, we don't see the patient that is therapeutically anticoagulated with warfarin or a NOAC living independently and stroke-free in the community. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been useful. Please access the NICE guidelines and the resources available on the last slide.